Hey everyone, welcome back. So in my previous video, we discussed some of the intermediate skills required to become a data engineer. So if you haven't watched that video, then you can click link over here and watch it. In this video, we will be talking about some of the advanced level skills to become a data engineer. Some of the skills I will mention are really important to have as a data engineer. And some of the skills, if you don't have, then it's fine. The reason to include these skills is as you grow as a data engineer, you will be leading different projects and having understanding of security, networking, deployment will help you a lot. In the first section of this video, we will talk about some of the must have skills for data engineers. And in the second section of this video, we will talk about important skills. But if you don't have it in your early career, then it's fine. But if you want to get ahead in your career, then learning those skills will help you a lot. So let's get started. We understood what defines a big data in our last video. Processing big data on a local computer is next to impossible because every computer has some limitations. You might run out of memory or space. Most of the time you will be processing your data in large computers. Now it can be some on-premise server owned by some companies or cloud networks. These days many companies are moving from on-premise data centers to cloud networks because managing server is really difficult and comes with a lot of cost. When we talk about big data, we need large servers which can process huge amount of data and this can be achieved using cloud services. Cloud is basically large servers owned by large companies such as Google, Amazon or Microsoft and you can rent them by paying based on your requirements. This is Gartner Magic Quadrant. This quadrant divides cloud providers into different sections. And as you can see, there are three top cloud providers available in the market. AWS, Amazon Web Services, GCP, Google Cloud Platform, and Microsoft Azure. You can click any of the providers and start learning about it. My recommendation is to start with AWS because it has highest market segment. Once you learn one cloud, let's say AWS, then it will be really easy to learn on other clouds such as GCP or Azure because most of the services are common across these providers. Name, UI, cost, etc. might be different, but the fundamental concept remains the same. Now, these cloud service providers provide most of the services we talked in the last video, such as to create relational database, AWS has AWS RDS, relational database service. So on one click, you can create your own database. If you want to store some object data such as images or video, then you can use AWS S3, simple storage service. For data warehouse, it has AWS Redshift. For data transformation, it has AWS Glue. You can monitor your services using CloudWatch. To run large batch processing on Hadoop MapReduce or Spark, it has AWS EMR, Elastic MapReduce. For real-time processing, it has AWS Kinesis and so on. Most of these services are pay per use, so you only need to pay for the amount of resources you use for your work. Now these are some of the services you should know as a data engineer. Just write it down if you want or take a screenshot of it for your future reference. You can also do a certification once you have hands on practice working with this service. Important note, your goal should not be just about passing certification and getting a piece of paper. You should mainly focus on getting your fundamentals strong and learning how to use these services together to achieve some task. Once you learn and get good understanding, then you can give Cloud Practitioner Certification Exam. This is very basic and really good for beginners. And after Cloud Practitioner, you can give AWS Certified Solution Architect Associate Exam. I've also created a video on this topic. You can click link over here and watch it. Now let's talk about data lakes. In my last video, we talked about ETL pipeline and data warehouses. Data comes in various form and you need to run some transformation job on top of it to store everything in one place, such as data warehouse. Data lake is centralized repository that allows you to store all your data such as structured and unstructured and use it directly for analytics. To store data in data warehouse, you have to run long data pipeline from pulling data to transforming it and creating proper schema then storing it on data warehouse. But for data lakes, you don't have to do all these things. Data lakes works on the concept of schema on read. So while performing analytics, you will pull required information from raw data and do your work. On AWS, your central repository of the data can be S3, simple storage service. 
and you can use AWS Athena which is an interactive query tool that can run queries on raw files stored on S3. Now data lake might be quite confusing topic to understand in single go. But in future I will do a live stream where we will do an entire project to understand this concept in detail. For now just understand data lake exists and this is one way you can analyze the data. This is where the section 2 of this video begins. These skills are not really required for beginners data engineers. But this is really important if you want to get ahead in your career to be a manager position or a tech lead then you should know security, networking, deployment and other topics. So let's get started. Let's talk about data security. One of the biggest concerns companies have is about the data security. Data is new oil and having access to computer data can help you to understand them better. The reason companies like Google, Facebook and other companies provide so many user based services is because they have access to large data pool. And that way they are able to analyze things and use it for their business purposes. Security of data is really important. For each type of data, there are some data compliance standards have been created and companies has to meet these standards to store those data. For example, this is one standard PCI DSS, Payment Card Industry Data Security Standards. So companies who are storing payment card information of customers have to meet security requirements. Like this, there are so many different standards for different types of data. You can check the link in the description to know about it more. Next on the list is learning about networking tools. This is also connected to security. We need to make sure that data that has been processed or being transferred are from secure network and no unauthorized person should be able to access the network. To transfer data from one location to another location, there should be a VPN connection. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network, created between two devices for secure communication. On cloud platforms, you can create your own private networks to manage your servers such as virtual private cloud VPC. It will be a virtual network. There will be many things attached to it such as subnets, security groups, firewalls, network access control list, different gateways, etc. Again, you don't need to know these things for the beginner level data engineering jobs. But as you go forward in your career, then you might have to learn these things because you will be leading different projects and teams and you should know how all the things are connected. Now let's talk about deployment tools. Two things I want to cover in this topic is that container services and CI CD pipelines. In development when one person writes some code and gives that code to another person there are chances that due to some system configuration and changes in OS it might not run on other computer. It works on my computer. A container is a standard unit of software that packages up the code and its all dependencies so the application runs quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another. Next on the list is CI CD pipeline, continuous integration and continuous deployment. Generally CI CD comes under DevOps or deployment part but as I said being a manager or a tech lead you should know everything from data generation to deployment and CI CD is how you can efficiently manage your code for testing and deployment. These are different tools for CI CD pipeline, Jenkins, GitHub Actions, etc. We will talk about this in detail in DevOps roadmap video, but for now just understand what CI CD is. And the last is infrastructure as a code. When you are working on a cloud platforms, most of the time you will use UI to create servers, networks or accounts. Problem with this approach is that as company grows, there will be more users, servers and networks and things starts to become more messy and difficult to handle. Infrastructure as a code is basically you define the entire structure of your infrastructure such as server, networks, firewall, user access etc and create one single template. Whenever someone wants to create a server or a network, they can directly use a template and on one click they can easily create and delete entire infrastructure. This way things are easy to create, manage and delete. Section 1 of this video was really important and section 2 is also important but not mandatory for early stage in your career. So in the last three part we talked about why you need to learn these skills and what is the real world use case behind it. In my next video I will give you the entire roadmap to become a data engineer with the timelines, each and every skill set and each and every topic. If you learned something new from this video and if you like my work then don't forget to share it with your friends. 
If you want to support my work, then you can subscribe to this channel and like the video that will push YouTube algorithm to recommend this content to more and more people. Thank you. Thank you.